Here is a gray ink by Sailor Bungu Box Melancholic Gray. Let's jump straight to the end with my opinion on this ink. The paper I'm using here is a Moramon Nemesine notebook. Gray is a color that's hard to get right, but I don't want it to look like it's a faded black. But when gray is done right, it's awesome. This one does a perfect gray combined with being a complete failure as a gray ink. There's a bunch of tone variation by pen. So when it's good, it's great. And all the rest of the time, it isn't. It does shade, but the shading reminds me of if you were trying to do shading in a watercolor with Payne's Gray and did all the shading with that. But doing that to do shading is wrong in watercolor. So don't don't use Payne's Gray to, to do shading. Gray isn't how you do shading. And it just reminds me of that and makes me feel sad. The pen for today is a Pelican M1000. All of the writing samples are done with a Platinum 3776 with a soft fine nib, which writes rather dry. A Hero 7035 with a fine nib that writes wet. A Visconti Van Gogh with a medium nib and an average flow. A Lamy Safari with a broad nib that writes average. Now that we know my opinion on this ink, let's see how I got there, starting with the first writing sample done on Claire Fontaine. Looking at the soft fine nib, this tone is a little too light, really. And you will see in some of the areas where it gets light to the point that you almost can't see some of it. And it's really just not, it's just too light. It, I mean, ugh, no feather, no spread. It does shade. In some of the shading areas, you start to see some of the right tones. Now, you see shading in of going light to very dark at the F. Still, the shading isn't quite what it should be. Looking at still on the second line, the S starts light and so light you barely see the top of the S. And then the downward swoop of that S is what lets you know it's still there. Then it starts to get just a bit too dark as a gray through the rest of the word until the last L where it becomes too light again. Looking at the wet fine nib, it is a whole lot darker than it was with the soft fine, darker than I would prefer a gray ink to be. Really just, uh, just, it looks like a faded black. It, it, it really is wrong. There's no feather and there is no spread. It does shade and some of the shading is rather dramatic in what goes on. You see it in branches. The B starts quite dark and then it gets to a nicer mid-tone and it stays more or less there till the H where it starts to darken up a little bit and gets very dark at the S where it jumped really jumps off the page. Mostly darker tones, really faded black coming through if faded black is your gray, this is not too bad. Looking at the medium nib, it is the same tone as the wet fine. We get no feathering, we get no spread, we get shading. And the shading itself is nearly what you would really want to see happen. Look at nearly on the second line. Nice mid-tone to start with. Starts to darken up just on the second part of the R. Lightens up into the L. Very dark at the Y. And it's got something going a little there. Looking at got. That starts in its lighter tone. Works its way to a much darker tone. I think the shading in got right there is not too bad. Looking at the broad nib, it is just a little bit, the taddest bit lighter than it was in the medium. And I think the tone we're getting here is the closest we get to a pencil gray. 
Now, the thicker lines make it not look like it was a pencil. We get no feathering and we get no spread, but we do get some shading just on the tip of the tongues on the third line. The cross of the T is a little bit darker and we go down mid-tone in the middle of the T, a little bit darker at the bottom through halfway of the O, lightens up again on the on until it gets to a darker mid-tone at G then stays kind of at that tone until it gets really dark at the ES at the end. Looking at the back of the page, we get no bleeding and no ghosting. Like most inks, this one comes in a bottle. This is how the Pilot Custom 823 fits. And here is the Pelican M1000. Here is the ink level when you can no longer fill a Lamy Safari. There were approximately five milliliters of ink left. The next writing sample is done in a Portage reporter's notebook. Looking at the soft fine nib, it is a little bit darker than it was with the uh, Claire Fontaine. I think it's a bit more readable here. It looks more like pencil here. It's just a tad bit lighter as a tone than what we had in the uh, broad on the Claire Fontaine, really putting the tone right. The soft fine nib darkened just a little bit with this paper makes it look right to be pencil on paper. No feather, no spread. The shading that's going on is really right at the edge. When you look at edge, it starts darker at the E, lightens up from the E to D, where it darkens from the D to the G, gets light at the G, very dark at the E. Nice shading going on here. It's absolutely wild. Look at the word wild. That goes from lighter tones working its way darker to very dark at the D. Looking at the wet fine nib, it is just a little bit lighter than it was on the Claire Fontaine with no feathering, with no spread, without looking like it is pencil, just looking like that faded black again. It does shade having it come through. Luckily, looking at the word luckily, the L starts lighter, it gets dark at the bottom of the L, lightens up halfway through the U, and it's at the Keeley, K-I-L-Y, where it just starts to darken up a bit. Looking at the medium nib, it is just a tad bit lighter than it was with the Claire Fontaine. Really, the tone that I'm getting here, perfect, really perfect in what I'm seeing. No feather, no spread. It shades, it shades very well. Don't pay attention to the word time, that's mostly a darker word, but take more of a look at the word sit directly above it, where it starts lighter and works its way darker. Now, if you really want to see that pencil tone the whole way through, you'll look at long on the first line. Looking at the broad nib, it is just a tad bit darker than we had with the medium, a tad bit lighter than we had with the broad on the Claire Fontaine. It's really very close to what I was seeing with the soft fine on this paper. We get no feathering, we get no spread. We do get shading. You can see it in the word U that the Y starts much lighter. It gets a mid-tone during the Y and lightens up into the O where the U gets very dark not you, the word, you, the letter at the end of you, the word. Now, once again, we deal with that problem of the broad just being too thick to look like it is a pencil on paper. Looking at the back of the page, we get no bleeding and no ghosting. There's a lot to learn by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is immediately put into water for 10 to 15 seconds. The one on the right, marked with a D, is let dry for 10 minutes before putting it into water. The next writing sample is done on a national brand Steno notebook.
looking at the soft fine nib. It is a bit darker than it was on the Claire Fontaine. We get no feathering. We get no spread. We do get shading. You see it in meeting place on the second line where you get a bunch of mid and darker tones through this whole word. The same thing happens in wolves on the second line, but in kept, you get mostly the dark tones and it doesn't look as nice more this doesn't really look so much as a gray on this paper as it does again that faded black looking at the wet fine nib it is quite a bit darker than it was with the soft fine darker than it was on the claire fontaine we should rename this as aged out black or aged out blue black it's it's really it's more like a faded black here no feather no spread almost nothing for shading i say almost nothing because when you look at tree on the first line it starts lighter and it does get darker and when you look at the second line where compared compared to till directly underneath it two very different tones but it's not shading in any kind of nice way Looking at the medium nib, it is lighter than it was with the wet fine nib, darker than it was on the Claire Fontaine. It has no feather. It has no spread. It has some shading. It really does just more come as a full word when you look at they on the first line compared to guarded on the first line. Now, guarded does show a tiny bit of shading. You see the RD is a little bit lighter than the rest of the word, where two light tone the whole way. Looking at the broad nib, it is a little bit lighter than it was with the medium little lighter, I think, as a darkness than we had on Claire Fontaine. Now, one of the things I really want to say for this ink is the other color papers aren't drawing out any other colors from this ink. It still manages to almost always look like a faded black ink. It has no feather. It has no spread. It does have shading. And the shading that goes on is more of a middle ground of shading. When you look at middle on the first line, it starts lighter, gets darker in the middle of the word. Second D lightens up just a little bit till you're on the downstroke of the E that it gets much darker, which is great that it does it. Look at great directly underneath. Light to dark, even graduation right through the shades. Looking at the back of the page, we get no bleeding and no ghosting. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink can be expected to perform on the page. And more importantly, how hard it may be to clean from your pen. The smear is allowed to dry for three days before testing it. The highlighter is on the top left. Pen flush is on the top right. One third bleach solution is on the bottom left. And water is on the bottom right. The next writing sample is done in a Rhodia notebook. Looking at the soft fine nib, it is darker than it was on the Claire Fontaine. I wanna say noticeably darker, quite a bit darker. It looks like it's an entirely different ink, especially considering that the performance on these two papers is not usually a world apart. We get no feathering, we do, or sorry, we get no spread, but we do get shading. Look at but on the second line. It starts darker, lightens up just a hair at the U, very dark at the T. Not a terrible thing when you look at terrible and it's more or less one tone that is a lighter black or faded black, I think the word terrible is actually looking pretty nice on the page. Now the vertical lines, they get to melt into the background because here it's coming through dark enough that it's not gonna be a problem. Looking at the wet fine nib, it is a bit darker than it was with the soft fine. 
about the same tone as on the Claire Fontaine. We get no feathering, we get no spread. We do get some shading. You see it in every on the second line, starting darker mid-tone through the most of the word, the Y getting quite a bit darker and having the A and the D as uh, a bit darker, but the N as lighter. But for the most part, we get a lot of very solid writing like the circle on the third line. Looking at the medium nib, we get the same tone as the wet fine nib. So it's not like it's my favorite going on here. It's definitely like that faded black. I can't harp on that enough. No feathering and no spread. Now it does shade and you see it together in the word together on the first line where it starts lighter, gets dark at the bottom of the T, lightens up into the O, darker at the G, lightens at the bottom of the G into the E and gets very dark at the T-H-E-R at the end. Now the thing about this that I am noticing is take a look at the T and G and the vertical line is cutting the ink. It's not penetrating in through it. But if you look at there on the first line, the ink is unaffected by the vertical line itself. So it is some inconsistency of the paper. Looking at the broad nib, it is a little bit... Uh, <laughs> it's a little bit lighter than it was in the medium, bit lighter than we had on the Claire Fontaine. We get no feathering and we get no spread. The vertical lines are definitely cutting some of these letters, like you see it in Gandalf and you see it in Till and Heard. So it's not getting through that little bit. The shading that's there in times looks really nice, like Will starts lighter and the bottom of the I and L's are both darker than the top. But the shading itself isn't coming through as something that looks like you would really want it. It's just there here. Again, it's a faded black to me and I just don't like my grays to look that way. Looking at the back of the page, we get no bleeding and no ghosting. With over a thousand inks reviewed, let's take a look at some color comparables. Here is Califolio Grease de Pain. Here is Diamine Graphite. Here is Diamine Sparkling Shadows. Here is Organic Studios Arsenic Gray. The next writing sample is done in a composition lab notebook. Looking at the soft fine nib, it is a little bit darker than it was on the Claire Fontaine. Where on the Claire Fontaine, there were areas that were too light to read. We don't really encounter that here. That little bit darker is just what it needs. We do get very much a pencil tone with this ink on this paper. No feather, no spread. It can't help itself. It did shade very well looking at help where largely a uh, darker tone, but the top of the H, top of the L and the D are a bit lighter. It's one thing that it is doing very well. Look at one going from lighter to darker in a gradual thing. Another word that does it is another right next to that. Looking at the wet fine nib, it is a bit darker than we had with the soft fine nib. I think the tone still kind of holds in that pencil range. Maybe if you were using a B instead of an HB, but HB is the tone that I care for. We get no feathering. I'm sorry, it's yeah darker than the soft fine, lighter than the Claire Fontaine. We get no feathering, we get no spread. We do get shade happening and look it happened on the third line. Starts darker at the H, lightens up into the A. The first P and up to the 
E are a bit darker and it lightens up just a little bit through the rest of the word. So the shading that's happening is very nice. You see it in four where it's darker at the top of the F than it is at the bottom of the F stays lighter until it gets to the R. Looking at the medium nib, it is the same tone as the wet fine, lighter than it was on the Claire Fontaine, with no feathering, with no spread, with shading that doesn't show up as well as it does on the Claire Fontaine. It's really very subtle that kind of shows up here, especially on the word especially, where it starts lighter, gets a little bit darker on the PEC, but then lightens up on the IAL, but the second LY is just a little bit darker. Food for thought when you look at food, which is a very monotone gray the whole way through. Looking at the broad nib, it is lighter than it was with the medium, a whole lot lighter than it was on the Claire Fontaine. We get no feathering, we get no spread, we get only a light peppering of shading in a couple of spots. I mean, you see it in the cross of the T of sometimes, and you see it where the T cross the H, it gets a bit darker on they right next to that. The shading is definitely here, but it's not something that is speaking out in any kind of a way. You really have to look for it most of the time, not like the word like, where the part of the K and the E are much darker, but more like horses, where the H is only a slight bit darker than the rest of the word, and the E a slight bit darker than the S's that surround it. Looking at the back of the page, we get no bleeding and no ghosting. While it's nice to see ink in the same color family, I prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. Here is a blue ink by Ackerman, their number five, Shocking Blue. Here is a magenta ink by Noodler's Omaha. Here is a green ink by Califolio Teodora. Here is a purple ink by Robert Oster, Purple Soul, formerly Purple Jazz. The last writing sample is done on 20 pound copy paper. Looking at the soft fine nib, it is darker than it was on the Claire Fontaine. We get feathering and we get spread. Neither the feather or the spread are any kind of a real problem for this. I think this is performing very well on this paper with this nib. Now it's a little darker than I would prefer my gray to be, but I don't think what we're getting here is a bad combination. We get some shading, you see it in wards. The second part of the W gets a bit darker. It lightens up into the words, but the G to S is a bit darker. Meat, on the other hand, on the second line is much darker as an entire word. But goblins, mid to dark at the BL and lighten up at the INS, I think it's pretty good. Looking at the wet fine nib, it is a whole lot darker than it was with the soft fine, darker than it was on the Claire Fontaine. It feathers, it spreads, it stands out and is a little bit annoying. Taking a look at the G's in Great and Goblin, a lot of feathers that are going on there. Same with excitement. That word is just vibrating off the page. It's got so much feathers. The spread, on the other hand, is not something that's a huge problem. It's a little bit more than a medium, but it is a wet flowing pen. Now, as far as shading goes, there's almost none, which could be a good thing for this paper. Looking at the medium nib, it is lighter than it was with the wet fine nib. A little bit darker than it was on the Claire Fontaine. We get feathering, we get spread. 
you don't even have to hunt them out. Looking at hunting on the first line, the NTI, a lot of feathering. Spite, the PT, lots of feathering. This, under that, the his has feathers. So it's, uh, yeah. Now there is some spread. I don't think the spread is as bad as what we had on the wet fine. I think both of those are about at the same thickness of the line. Shading does occur. You see it in spite of itself on the word spite. That starts as a lighter tone for what we're getting to darker at the TE. This is something that does happen. Look at this directly underneath it. Starts as its lighter tone and gets much darker towards the S. Same thing for had, lighter to darker at the D. But this whole lighter to darker on every word is not something that is a consistent thing or it would be a bit nicer. Looking at the felt tip pen, I mean the broad, because it looks like it was written with a felt tip pen. It has feathering, it has spread. Look at the inside of the T in it. Look at all of from, all of trees or south or choose a word. The feathering for the most part is much smaller. When it gets bigger, it's obnoxious. Most of the feathering is not the end of the world. And the spread that it gets isn't in itself the end of the world. Could you use this if you really wanted to? Sure. Why would you though? Now, uh, shading, it does shade. I mean, you see it in the cross of the T and it on the first line, and you see it on the cross of the T to the H in themselves on the third line, same with the S. And among goes light to dark at the G. Looking at the back of the page, you see that ghosting is fairly well under control. Did a really good job with the broad. The medium and the wet fine, not as good. The soft fine didn't even do as well as the broad. Nothing bled through touching the page underneath, though. So what nib and pen do I think are going to give the best writing experience with this ink? The paper I'm using here is yellow Rhodia paper. The soft fine is the lightest and can often get too light for a full page of writing. The wet fine, while darker and shades better, is just a tad too dark to look like a pencil, which is what I would prefer. The medium is the same tone as that wet fine nib, just with some thicker lines as you would kind of expect. The tone of the broad is perfect, but the thick lines, has it not looked like a pencil? Uh, that's a problem, you know, but the tone is right. So what we need here is to not get the thick line, but to use a medium flow pen like that from a, a medium flow fine or extra fine to really get a gray that looks close to pencil as we can here. I hope you got something out of this video and thanks for watching.